We have to start to remember that this world is a projection and so when the mind is asleep and dreaming the closest closest thing really to the projector room, I'll say, of your mind is the body. So uh, that's why you can trust that how you feel in the body is like a barometer of how your mind's doing. Uh, you may wonder what, when I'm feeling uncomfortable, when I feel different types of discomfort, that is an opportunity to choose a miracle. If you have a, an irritation, an annoyance, a, a headache, some stiffness, some soreness, you're fatigued, whatever, then that's just a projection of a state of mind that's projected onto the body. The body is so much identified as the identity now and the spirit is completely pushed out of awareness through the amnesia that, that a lot of times when we say, I feel, we're talking about how the personality feels or about how the body feels. And then Jesus assures us that personalities don't feel and that bodies don't feel. There you go. Here we go. This starts to get really deep. What do you mean the body doesn't feel? That really contradicts a lot of human experience. The body doesn't feel at all, but He's saying, no, your mind tells your body what to feel. It's all in the mind. That's why Jesus says, all illness is mental illness. There is no such thing as physical illness. Because that was a projection. A lot of times people are very much concerned with, you know, they say, please talk about healing the body. And Jesus says at one point in the Course, the mind was sick that thought the body could be sick. Wow. That's a powerful line if you really start to just take it in. The mind was sick that thought the body could be sick. It's mesmerism. That's what Mary Baker Eddy called it. It's, it's like hypnotism. It's mesmerism. It's hallucination. It's a figment of imagination and the meaning and the feelings which are experienced in the sleeping mind are projected to the body and that's why so many cures are sought for and Jesus calls this magic when you try to attempt to adjust and to come back to a place of comfort using what he calls external means. Anything that's believed to be outside the mind is external means. And so we have to remember though that everything is the result of a decision. So, so if someone is choosing to feel ill, you have to remember that they're choosing that because they're afraid of something worse. In other words, people say to me, who, would, who in their right mind would choose to be sick? And I'm like, oh, you got it right there. No one in their right mind would choose to be sick. Sickness is always a wrong-minded decision and it must be if sickness is chosen, if feelings are chosen, ill feelings or even symptoms that it must be that that is a choice between two things and the other thing would be a lot worse. And what's a lot worse to the ego is, is God, is the light. It's terrified of the light. It's terrified of awakening. It actually feels like, like the light is the enemy. That if, if the mind turns toward the light, then the ego will cease to exist. And that's true. <laughs> so it's like a, a fearful, threatening experience. So Jesus tells us in Lesson 136, when love comes close into your experience and you're too afraid of the love, it's like a sickness is a mechanism for, for saying, oh no, no, no thank you. Look at me, I'm vulnerable. And it's like calling forth a witness. Oh, I'm, I'm frail, I'm weak, leave me alone. Uh, or sometimes p children who are afraid of getting struck by a parent will say, please don't do it to me, I'll do it to myself. I'll mitigate a much greater punishment by, I'll do it to myself. 
And this is what's going on. It's very insane, but this is what's going on in the mind in terms of sickness. It's too afraid of healing. It would rather be right about being little and tiny and small than be happy in heaven. And that's basically what it's coming down to. <laughs>